Hello and welcome everyone to our first LIDA Executive 30-minute practical use case. My name is Deborah Burton and I am the channel marketing manager at ITpreneurs, but I'm also a member of the marketing team for the Lean IT Association. And it truly is my pleasure again to welcome you this morning. So a little bit about LITA, and I believe most of you know about the Lean IT Association and um, how we are a nonprofit organization that was founded over a year ago by six principal organizations. And you can see the names on this slide. They all came together uh, to really bring forth a set of industry standard Lean IT reference materials and other resources for practitioner organizations. And I think one of the important things, because I've been evangelizing and talking about Lean IT now since it was launched in April of uh, last year, but what we believe Lean IT brings to organizations is the fact that if you look at what's happening with companies, organizations really need to be in control. They really need to optimize their daily business. You know, but additionally, they also need to innovate on their business. Uh, we're talking about all these IT transformations, these digital transformations, and the technologies that they need to be up on and being in a position to take advantage of. And what Lean does, it offers a strong, well-founded solutions that help organizations and practitioners address these types of challenges. Now, Lean truly revolves around the principles for operational excellence, for customer centricity, for strategy development, for the management of real change and transition. It's for teams, it's for individual behaviors, and also their motivations. It's about the value that we believe Lean will bring to organizations. And that's why we are continually evangelizing. We do a number of these type of webinars. We are super excited today to have uh, no stranger to the Lean IT and LIDA movement, uh, Rennie first joining us. Uh, you probably heard Rennie because she's been a guest speaker with us before from some of our executive webinar series that we've done. I'm so pleased that Rennie has agreed to build and help us with our movement in terms of Lean IT in action by really talking about practical use cases. So let me tell you a little bit about Rennie if she's new to you. Um, Rennie has worked in the IT industry for the past 15 years, mostly focusing on process implementation and improvement in small and large public and private sector organizations. She's played a large part in the maturing the application of the lean philosophy and toolbox to the IT domain. When doing process work, she has a strong focus on ensuring and realizing actual benefits, and her approach is very pragmatic and direct. I should also mention that Rennie is on our advisory board and review council for the materials that we build from a LITA Lean IT perspective. So with that, Rennie, I just want to say uh, welcome and good morning and so pleased you could be here today. Hi, Deb, and hi, everybody, and thanks for the uh, introduction. I am, uh, I'm very pleased to have been re-invited to speak again to you guys about something that I'm very passionate about, uh, which I'm sure you gathered from uh, my curriculum that uh, Deborah gave you. Um, I'm extremely passionate about making these uh, lean philosophies and lean tools make sense in an IT context, and bridging the gap between making cars and, and uh, the IT industry is... Uh, is uh, not always easy, but I find it very interesting and very rewarding. Um, I will, I've wrecked my brain to find some good cases to share with you guys in terms of uh, how I've actually worked with uh, Lean uh, in companies to bring value based on uh, the knowledge that you can get in the three courses released uh, in the LITA framework right now. And as Deborah mentioned, they are the foundation, Kaizen, and leadership courses. So. Today, I tried to find a case for you to share about um, the foundation type uh, learnings. 
Um, I will first. Uh, oh, we have the poll. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to launch the poll because uh, you know Rene and I uh, also want to understand a little bit about you and your experience with Lean IT. So I'm going to launch the poll. Um, would you share with me? Are you a Lean IT expert? Um, do you have experience with ITIL and IT service management? Have you successfully sold Lean already for many years? Do you know a bit about me but want to know more? Or do you have no experience with Lean? So I see the numbers coming in. Ah, good, a good percentage of you have voted. Excellent. OK, if you haven't voted, last second to do so. OK, perfect. I'm going to close the poll and share the results. So Rennie, what do you think? I think this is a, uh, it's very, uh, very interesting. A lot of you guys are uh, ITIL experts and have some experience with both ITIL and Lean IT. I think that's great. Almost half of you guys know a little bit about Lean IT, but what I love the most is that you want to know more. So um, I think uh, I think this is a fantastic uh, starting point for, for the presentation that you all know the ITIL content more, uh, context more or less, and you want to know more about Lean. So uh, great stuff. Let's okay, jump. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna close the poll and back to the presentation. There yeah. you are. All right, we've tried to put uh, together an agenda for you that uh, kind of uh, incorporates it all. So uh, Deborah's already given you a small introduction to LITA as such. Uh, I'm gonna give you a small brief up about what is the Lean IT Foundation course all about, and then I'll dig right into the case. Um, and, of course, I'm not going to let you go without trying to tease you to attend the next webinar as well. Uh, let me move along. It says uh, recap and Q&A as the last point. You're more than welcome to, to uh, chat to Deborah about uh, questions you may have along the way. If she finds it uh, uh, totally in line with what I'm talking about, she will, uh, well, uh, or she's welcome to interrupt me and uh, with your questions and comments. Otherwise, we will definitely get back to them. Uh, all right. So the general overview about the LITA Lean IT Foundation course. It's a two-day, I will say, intensive course. There's a lot uh, on the table, a lot of curriculum to learn. But we try to spice it up, those of us doing the training, with interactions, reflections, discussions, and uh, some exercises. And the level of understanding that we're trying to, uh, to get uh, our students to is to know about lean to to when people ask you do you know anything about lean you don't say no basically that's the primary success criteria that you feel you know what it's all about you're not going to get to be an experienced expert and get lots of practical in, um, examples uh, and, and exercises so that you can really try to work with it and get some reflective uh, um, learnings that goes with the more complex real world, uh, you need to know that this is on a, on a know and understand level, uh, which is more than enough for the two days curriculum there. It's a it's super good curriculum. Um, you will be uh, able to at, uh, look at both the syllabus and the publication and a sample exam before you attend so that you have uh, a chance to kind of prepare yourself if you prefer that. Um, you will also uh, hopefully get some good input on uh, on how to uh, how to take it from the classroom to uh, to your own company without, as I said, gaining the full understanding of the complexity. All right. Uh, in the course, we will be talking about both the five principles. Those of you who know something about Lean will know the five principles from the book Lean Thinking, published by Womack and Jones. So we will, of course, be talking about those. Uh, as also about the, the different types of, uh, of waste and different types of uh, sources for bad quality. Talking about muri, mura, and muda as the Japanese words, uh, which I won't be uh, going further into. I'm just going to let you know that we will be discussing those and working with those on the course. Uh, the course is su uh, as such and the agenda around the course and the material behind it is structured on the base of the dimensions, as they call it. Uh, and I will just flip to the next slide, because here you can actually see what the dimensions hold. Uh, you have the customer dimension, you have the process dimension and waste, um, you have performance. If you don't know 
uh, how you've done and what effect you've caused. Uh, how do you know that you've caused an improvement or that you haven't? So you need to learn and try again. Uh, so that's also a very important focus. Uh, organization, both in terms of your project team or the, per the person trying to impose the change, but also in terms of the organization in the organization that is trying to adapt. Uh, problem solving as a specific um, uh, uh, way of working, it, it's a very specific topic that, that you need to know. It, it, it has a different color because it's not really a dimension, it's more a way of working. And attitude and behavior, uh, culture or Kaizen, is uh, at the heart of it all. So these one, two, three, four, five, six uh, dimensions, as we call it, is what the agenda for course is structured all around. So uh, you should recognize those if you attend um, the training. So let me put the foundation course into perspective in terms of the other types of courses we, uh, we have. We do have, as I mentioned, the on the know and understand level, we have the DIN-IT Foundation. You can progress from there onto the Kaizen, which is the course you take if you want to be the one uh, orchestrating events or applying a Kaizen or continuous improvement techniques in the organization. So that's very much focused on that. You can also progress directly to the Lean IT leadership. If you're a leader at any level, uh, this is the course uh, for you in terms of what type of leader do you need to be? How do you uh, encourage the right behavior as a leader in the employees that you lead? So this is definitely a course for you if you have a leadership role. Uh, the Lean IT coach um, course has not been offered yet. It will be offered um, by LITA, I think, in the first half of 2007, without being more specific. We are working on it uh, this latter half of 2016. So, uh, but in 2017, it will be uh, released. All right. Um, who should attend the course? The target audience basically is everybody. If you have an organization that you want to turn towards more of a lean way of working or a group of people that you want to install more of a lean way of thinking in, uh, we highly suggest that you have them attend uh, this course to get a good foundational level and understanding of what lean in an IT context is all about. So more or less everybody should uh, gain benefit from attending. Um, and I already talked about how the level is know and understand. So I'm not going to reiterate that. I will get started on the presentation of the case, which I'm sure most of you guys are really interested to hear about, or I hope you are. Let me uh, set the scene here. We are talking about a project or an, um, an effort that has run over the course of about a year at this point in time, and it's ongoing actually, in a Danish municipality in the IT department. Um, I'm from Denmark, so that's why it's a Danish municipality. Um, I will base my presentation of the case on Barbara Minto's uh, pyramid principle, which actually you will learn in the Kaizen course, but uh, let me dig into it. The situation is that they con conducted in October 15 um, employee satisfaction survey, which was definitely not satisfactory. They were very unhappy about how tasks were distributed and assigned among employees. There was an, a feeling that some people were, were cheating others maybe a little bit in uh, keeping the good tasks for themselves and, and giving uh, the boring tasks to other people. Uh, they lacked an overview of what they needed to do and, and the result of that was a little bit uh, stress, I will say, uh, or at least animosity a little bit towards, uh, not necessarily a person, but just the whole situation. Uh, there was a very strong feeling of that. Um, and there was a strong lack of collaboration between the support and technical teams, um, actually also the project managers, but we focused mostly on the support and technical teams to begin with. So, so this was the situation. It was, it was a department uh, very much um, in disarray and, and with animosity. Uh, complications, uh, frustrations. The complication was that people were starting to uh, show effects of stress. They were starting to leave. They were starting to um, go on stress leave situation and the quality to customers was starting to suffer as well. So our challenge to ourselves was, can we change the way we work and organize ourselves to improve both customer and employee satisfaction? 
that was the challenge we uh, gave ourselves. All right. So an overview of what we've done. We, uh, we worked specifically a lot, actually, on the incident process, mapping and working with competencies specifically. Uh, daily stand-up meetings have been introduced, uh, design of a desired point of solution in the service change for incidents. So where do we want which types of incidents solved? And, and I think actually this is an integral part of understanding lean in terms of uh, particularly an incident process. You decide where in the service chain you want what types of tasks uh, solved. So analyze what type of tasks you have, decide or analyze what type of competency level is needed to solve them, and place their, uh, their solution point where you want it. We actually implemented it rather stringent in this uh, IT department by having a closed list of types of incidents that the service desk uh, was allowed to solve. If the incident type was not on this list, they had to escalate it technically to the technical team. Uh, this kind of gave a very strong uh, enticement for the technical team to document the other types of incidents that uh, that might happen so that the service desk could get them on their positive list of incidents to solve. So it, it had a very good effect in terms of producing documentation, I can say. So working specifically with point of solution and your service change was something we worked, uh, we actually spent a lot of effort on. Another um, sub-project you can say that we worked on was the channel strategy, how we serve our clients, which, which types of channels do we service, which types of channels on, and I'll get back to more specifics on how we actually, uh, actually did that. Uh, and improving the service culture in IT, we did some seminars on what is good service. If a help desk employee insists on doing stuff for people, uh, not allowing them the opportunity to learn and do it themselves, is that good service really? They had an ingrained uh, culture of good service being them doing things for people. And we actually spend and continuously spend a lot of effort trying to uh, nudge that understanding a little bit and that culture a little bit that intervening is giving better service than not intervening. Here I also mean uh, pushing the point of solution to the client or the customer or the user themselves. If they can service themselves, they can actually get 24-hour service with stuff. They can get the mail working on their uh, mobile phone again by themselves, and they don't have to wait for the service desk to open at 8.30 in the morning. So uh, intervening and making uh, customers or users dependent on you is not necessarily a better service than not doing it. So we worked and continuously work a lot with that, actually. It's a hard not to crack. Still to come, uh, apart from continuous improvement on these areas, which is still ongoing, of course, uh, project intake and qualification. So we, we are moving into the project domain as well. As you can see, we're kind of tackling the, the uh, challenges of the entire IT organization. I won't talk too much about that. Implementing improvements designed for the IT procurement process. Particularly, intervening was a big issue here. Uh, they, uh, all the users had to send their orders to the IT department for them to order with the external suppliers, which added two to three days more delivery time. Uh, a lot, a lot of work uh, done, and we found out that we could save 95% of the time spent in the process of procuring, for instance, a tablet or smartphone by uh, circumvening, I think you say, uh, the IT department entirely and making a, a positive catalog for, uh, for users to order from so we control what they order and how and having uh, suppliers ship directly to uh, clients. Not to mention the whole financial department having to double invoice and between many parties. So, um, so the IT procurement process, I can highly recommend looking into that uh, for improvements. And change and problem processes are also coming. But uh, believe me, we have a lot to do with uh, just the incident processes. So this was just a brief overview of the scope. I'll take you through the dimensions and how we actually worked with the dimensions in this case, so as to give you kind of a link to the foundation course and what you learned there. Um, the first dimension I want to uh, take is, of course, the customers. They are the most important uh, stakeholder in this entire picture. 
We did have several workshops with customers, and I have a picture here of one of the workshops where we invited people from all of the departments in the municipality to share with us uh, their information about what type of users do you have, what are your needs, what type of service do you like, um, and, and uh, putting that on both a voice of, uh, of customer, we, we actually did a voice of regulator, voice of process, voice of employee, as well, analysis when we did this, uh, I only put the voice of customer slide in here. So. Uh, and we ended up with, a, with a, a diagram of what type of users uh, or customers do we have. And this is in Danish, so, and I duly apologize for that, but I will uh, translate it. I'm sure if you uh, speak English, which I'm sure you do, you will uh, have guessed that this is can or the ability and cannot. So do you have the ability to help yourself or do you not have the ability to help yourself? On the right hand side is do you have the desire, to, uh, or this is do you not have the desire, and on the left hand side here do you have the desire to help yourself? So you'll see a, um, a division of uh, user types in, in uh, these two dimensions. Do you have the ability to help yourself and do you have the desire to help yourself? And I'm sure that uh, you can already figure out that the user group that neither has the ability or the desire to help themselves are both expensive and uh, and very um, very demanding. So uh, I won't go further into the happy now uh, methodology, but I highly recommend working with it. It's very easy to uh, to use to get a, a good roadmap of what type of users you are looking at. Um, so we did that to understand our customers, and we continuously have dialogue with the customers. And one of our deliveries is actually to set up regular meetings with the customer representatives for each department. And we're actually going to make them responsible for uh, their own support and, and connection with IT um, on those meetings. Performance. This is a, a, an example of a sub-process mapped. In the, in the procurement process where th this is the sub-process of the handling that happens in IT of an order. I won't go into the details. I just want to share with you uh, that we put numbers on everything. It's not enough just to learning to see what's happening. You also have to put numbers on everything. Otherwise, you don't know what what's the, the real drain here and what's not the real drain. So where do you put your efforts? Uh, so the, the small blue ones over here on the, on the right side, or sorry, left side, is an indication of how many minutes are, are spent on this activity alone. And then you add it up up here to how many minutes are then spent on this sub-process when you add it up. We also had uh, these two yellow ones with the red X's are the, um, uh, the exceptions. So what you... I'm sure you don't see it because it's too small on your screen, but what, what is written down here is, in how many percentages of the cases does this exception occur? And when it occurs, per time it occurs, how much time does it add to the cycle time of the process? So that you can get both um, a, a complete cycle time, including exceptions, and the, the run through without ex exceptions. So you can analyze that. The queues in between sub-processes, where are the tickets sitting, where are the orders in this uh, particular instance sitting, how long time are they sitting there, and by what principle do you uh, take stuff from the queue. This is just things to take away from you or for you. What I want to, uh, to just say uh, briefly with this is keep it fact-based. Make sure that you have numbers on things so that you can actually measure where the big issues are and what it, uh, impact you're making with your work. Organization. This is just a rough diagram. It's a picture of when we were modeling how the flow of the service chain should be uh, and, and the FIFO queue and the prioritized queue. This is the mean symbol for a queue. Um, I, I'm hoping you can see the mouse when I move it. So, so, and this is help desk and the dispatcher and the second and the third level. So, this is just an example of how much we worked all the time with modeling the process and who does what to get the best flow, which is a very important lean principle. We also met very much uh, or work very much with the competencies in the organization. Who knows what? Where do we have the competency holes? Where do we need to actually lift competence in order to achieve what we want? 
because if only one person in service desk knows how to handle this and that system whenever you have this type of incidents, uh, you, you are just not able to have a good flow because you're very much person dependent. So person dependencies are something you need to spot and do something about and you do that with the employees by mapping it with them. It's very easy to see where all the red markers which signals less knowledge. It's very easy to spot and everybody can see where we need to make an effort. Attitude and behavior. We did uh, some profiling. Uh, I used something called whole brain which is uh, an indicator of uh, preferences. Um, we did a test on, on all of that. This is actually the CIO, uh, CIO sitting right here. So uh, everybody did this test. We used it actively and we, uh, we use it in our collaboration all the time to avoid conflicts. This, this whole thing is a, a matter of, like a, it says here, attitude and behavior. So how do you react when somebody comes and tells you you've made a mistake? or something needs to be done differently. Well, understanding your own preferences in terms of how you want to receive messages will actually um, make a difference in bettering the communication so you know, oh, you have this preference and I have this preference, so we need to communicate in this way. Also, we work with the grief curve, which is something we work with in the Lean Leadership as well. Um, change management, you know, not the ITIL change management, but uh, organizational change management. How do people react when they are faced with change? So we work explicitly with that as well to understand uh, our own reactions in terms of this. Problem solving. We had the uh, blitz, which is a, a lean way of working where you uh, uh, you concentrate your effort. Everybody clear the calendar for a day or a week or long you, you, uh, you learn or you need and then you get done. Don't drag things out, pull out, pull out the bed in one big uh, swift uh, get the benefit fast. So and of course we use visual management which is very much uh, part of uh, Lean and I'm very much uh, a fan of that. Uh, when mapping processes, we would uh, I would give out these uh, uh, red triangles to people to put where they thought the problems were that we needed problem solving and analysis on. And when doing that, and you take three steps back from a process like that, it's very easy to see where the problems are. You don't even need to vote because the triangles voted for you. I'm sure you can all see that unlike the yellow markers up here, the blue marker is a potential cause of the problem. It's very obvious when you do it like that. Uh, so use a structured method, use a visual method um, in terms of solving and analyzing the problems you find. I'm one minute over. I'm sorry, guys. Um, results. Customers experienced faster service management, more predictability in their interaction with IT. Employees actually felt the jobs more interesting and less stressful because they had an overview. Um, we, I can't even tell you in half an hour all the small things we implemented, but a work in progress cap, for instance, for each employee, they were only allowed to have several, seven tickets assigned to them. And the dispatcher owned the rest of the tickets. That actually had a huge effect in terms of throughput. Uh, so this is one of the things we implemented and, and it gave a quite a significant impact on employee satisfaction and the daily stand-ups as well, uh, I'll say. Uh, better overview of competencies, both for short and long-term uh, benefit. The employee was happy because we actually had better throughput, better productivity. A month and a half ago, I got a mail from the uh, from the department manager saying, I have people sitting in the service desk, we have no tickets, we have nothing to do, we cleaned up incident, we're done. We're, ne we're never done, but uh, that was a success that we actually got to the point where it was so streamlined now that they actually got things executed instead of having backlogs of 130 tickets uh, in the department. All right, for some reason the presentation stopped. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. I am unable to uh, flip to the next slide. Yes, I already mentioned that number, so let's get to the next one. Um, thanks, Deb. Um, all right. So, what? Why is having a lean foundation course good in a case like this? Well, it gives everybody 
uh, an understanding of what does good look like? What are we aiming for here? What is uh, good flow? Is that something to aim for? And what does good flow look like, for instance? Uh, making sure that we fix causes of problems instead of being super good at handling them when they happen. All these things, yes, trying to figure out what does good look like was actually uh, is, is something I highly recommend uh, using the foundation course for. Also, people uh, feel much better able to contribute now that they're members of the club, so to speak. So, uh, and, and it also leads them to uh, being able to take responsibility for some things, which is, I mean, especially being an external consultant, uh, I don't want them to get too dependent on me. And you should feel the same way if you're an internal consultant as well. The progress and what you've gained should not be dependent on your presence. People need to be able to take responsibility for their own um, productivity and improvements. And uh, that means that they need not to be too dependent on you. But take it slow. <laughs> Make sure that people can actually follow you. It, this whole cultural turnaround is something that actually is, uh, is challenging for a lot of people. Uh, and, and each, um, each uh, employee has their own limit or pace at which they can adapt and, and absorb change. Um, in their way of working, where are they seated, uh, who do they work with on a daily basis, what type of tasks, what's uh, the, the management and control around it. People can only take so much change. So I highly urge you to always keep, keep your fingers on the pulse in terms of how much people can actually absorb. <gasps> yes. I could speak for hours on this, I'll uh, try not to. Uh, so this is actually my presentation uh, of, uh, of the case as such. And what's particularly lean about that? Well, trying to get ahead of the mistakes instead of being good at fixing them, like I said before, is uh, Didoka, uh, is definitely a theme. Uh, going to Gemba, meaning where it happens, making sure that, that you work with the people to do things in a visual manager, man, uh, manner. Uh, is definitely also something that's very lean. And the whole Kaizen culture in terms of working with continuous improvement is, um, as an example, also very lean. So I hope I illustrated some kind of practical use of the, the dimensions and the way of working with lean in, in this case. Next time we'll be talking about how to use the DMAIC model to plan and execute projects with uh, with high intensive and involving workshops. How do you actually go about uh, planning that? That will be my next speak. <laughs>